Right, so I shall have likely it. Yes, this title page means it's time to return to Hefersburg and see how many names I can totally get wrong during the recording. It's issue three of Glory Hounds. And uh, if you haven't read this one, it's a fun one. Definitely some interesting stuff in here. I enjoyed it when I went through it. So, I have nothing more to say than that. I think it's just time to open the cover and get into issue three and try to avoid any more comic book references because I'm really struggling with those ones anyway. Let's see what's going on there. Last night. Oh, yeah, about 20 ticks that clocked all our booty and our booty out of there. What would be caught, tried and jailed? We are fearing for our lives. So, what happened in the end? Well, I still be here, be I not? <laughs> oh, Polly never did find his britches. Not exactly the luckiest lad in the world. He seems very eccentric. Arr, that the feathered fiend may be, for his heart be in the right place. For a criminal, you mean? For a criminal. That plastic camo, on the other hand. How'd you guys even meet him? Didn't really seem like the pirate type. Well, Scalarag summed our lair one day with his plan to seal the money talk's gown. How oh, he found the place I can't even begin to know. Almost throttled the lad before I saw the high spans with my own eyes. We take the gown and split the earnings, savvy? Well, twas unsinkable. It didn't turn out that way in the end. For either of us. Arr, he brought a spring upon our cable and no mistake. When you get your hands on him, give him a good paddling for me. I'll happily lend you an oar to do the deed with. We need to figure out where he went first. Well, I asked him if he'd ever taken anything that don't belong to him. He said he specialised in fashion of all things. Rare exotic silks, letters and the like. I even always thought things to be worth a lot of coin. Strange, ain't it? Says the guy who dresses like a freaking pirate for work. Have you looked in the mirror lately, laddie? We always say I'm colourful uniforms, but these most of ours ain't form fitting. Which ain't all bad, of course. Got quite the good look on that booty of yours. We're right back at you. You must do some serious squats. We're still in just for swimming and sailing, I must be certain. I can show you if you fancy. Hey now, business first. Well, fair play to you. I do suppose there'd be one more thing. While we're doing our syndicate orientation, Camo gapped about some of his plans for after. Said he's had some big things lined up for the coming days. And something about making them all pay. Speaking from experience, would you have any ideas what his next course of action could be? Experience? What'd you take me for? A rotten thief? Well, you did kind of steal one of the most valuable pieces the gallery had to offer. It was a jest, lad. Or right after me, I'd be doing some, uh, what be it called again? Reconnaissance? A reconnaissance. Aye, that. Find out his next target would be and get there before he does. And give him what he deserves. Thanks, Captain. Turns out there's more to you than just good looks and a criminal record, after all. Ha ha ha! You got quite the mouth on you, eh? And I could put it on you instead if you'd prefer that. I'm back at my place. I'll go pick up the tad, laddie. Wait for me. Drifting. I'm drifting on an endless blue expanse. 
far above the ground. My view bobs up and down, slowly, evenly. Thoughts come and go, never staying too long. I'm lost somewhere between dream and reality, my senses dulled save for a pleasant soreness. Exhausted but content, I stretch my aching limbs and yawn. At some point I open my eyes, but the blue expanse beneath me remains. Well, well, look who's waking up. Mm. I rub my eyes. The humongous whale just smiles at me. At least I think he does. Can't quite tell from this angle. His head's really big. Good morning to you, lad. Had a good night's rest? With what little of what we spent sleeping? Yeah, I guess. Ah, yes. Suppose I did keep you up longer than I intended. That's <laughs> okay. You make a pretty good bed. I snuggle into him. He flexes the peck I'm using as a makeshift pillow so hard it makes my head bounce. <laughs> hey, get it out. It's a little sore. Just a little, eh? Well, I'm not going too easy on you after all, then, lad. You got that going easy, Captain? Got a full body workout. I meant to get you back for that stunt you pulled with that fancy grappling hook of yours. But if you're still gabbing up a storm. Why, well, I'll bring my own weapons a choice next time we meet. See what really makes you squeak like a ship's wheel. I do like the sound of that. Didn't hear you, lad. What did you just say? I mean, I like the sound of that, Captain. Ah, that's more like it. Knew you would, laddie. Knew you would. What kinds of weapons are we talking about? Oh, a couple of ropes. Maybe a little something to shut that mouth of yours. Hell, yes. Really? Yes, I see the look on your face right now. Oh, priceless. Should stay on my toes next time we find it. This man's got me figured out this well already. Jerk. He laughs. You know, I got a few things of my own we can... Just then, the door slams open. I jolt up from the large whale man's chest, snatching the closest thing I can find. A small towel to cover our naked bodies with. Hey, Rumi. Oh, uh, hey, Rumi's friend. Max, you got to start knocking. Jesus. Oh, my bad. I'll come back later. He closes the door, but I hear his voice on the other side. Uh, breakfast on the table, dude. I got something for you. Kind of in the middle of something here. Where are we now? He squeezes my butt and I barely manage to contain a yelp. Oh, it's just my mum got these tickets to sing tonight. Thought maybe you knew where I might go. I noted. Oh, also some guy named Beto called. I was asking where you were. I tense up. Uh, what did you tell him? Oh, I just told him you're hanging out with a friend, you'd be over right away. He said he'd get you over there when you're ready. I hear him walk away. The sigh of relief that comes out of me is audible. Glad I'm not getting fired of being late twice in a single week. Oh, what time is it even? Hmm, about nine, lad. I suppose it'll be about time for our britches and bit our goodbyes for now. But first... He grabs me and turns me around with a single hand. Before I can protest, I feel his lips against mine, though it takes some precision aiming considering how big he is. Outside of combat, I don't think I mind the sheer size of him one bit. Or the size of his tongue, for that matter. I'm more than a little woozy by the time he pulls back. One for the road. I lean in again. Uh, can we make that too? I reckon we got time for another round. I'll make time. Hello, boy. I watch him get dressed. I'd shower with him, but our shower was barely big enough for me as is. I don't think he'd be able to handle Ahab. 
Don't think any apartment in the city can handle him. Kind of makes me wonder just how big the furniture and the doors at his place must be. Thought of a car wash sized bathtub amuses me. Well, I estimate this be it, Spotty. He regrettably zips up his pants. Next time we meet out there, we shall be enemies once more. At least I know your soft spots now. And I yours. It gives my chest a poke that easily bowled me over if you applied even the tiny spit more force. I intend to give you no quarter all the same. Not even after last night, huh? After last night should be aware that I ain't the type to just lay back and take it, Lally. Excuse me, just try to stay out of trouble until then, okay? Keep the thievery to a minimum if you can. And if you can promise me you'll go after Camo, it'll be a done deal. He leans down to give me one more peck on the lips before he turns around and walks out of my bedroom. Be seeing you, my hearty. I hear the front door close a moment later. Uh, can I uh, come in, dude? Yeah. Max has seen me in my undies more times than I can count. Not too big a deal when there's not a big naked whale in my room. Well, this place is a mess. What did you guys do? Just played some games. The triple A kind or the triple X kind? That's... That's none of your... I'm surprised you got anything done with all the earthquakes last night. I don't remember any earthquakes. Really, dude? The whole building was shaking. I kept hearing this awful screaming. Really harsh my vibe, know what I mean? It lasted for most of the night. I, uh, I'm sure no one got hurt. I hope so, dude. Anyway. He wiggles a pair of tickets in my face. What are these for? This big fashion thing tonight. Everyone's going. And your mom isn't? Nah, she's shooting this perfume ad. Thought she was shooting an ad yesterday. That one's for skinny jeans. Those are back in fashion. Way well, better fly every pair of jeans is skinny jeans. Keep up. <clears throat> you want these? I'll have to go, but I can't have this work thing today. And I promise I'll be at the Harn for the anniversary. No big deal, dog dude. I see much to sell for online. Probably make some bank. Thanks all the same. I'll uh, be ready in a few. Got to freshen up. Pour on some clothes. All right. By the way, guy just left. I swear someone in the news somewhere. Really now? Yeah, <laughs> funny that. Anyway, uh, yeah, see you in a bit. I shut the door and collapsed face first into the bed once more. The last day or so was still a blur to me, but after all is said and done, I think it had gone a lot worse. I thought it'd end with me sleeping with a wanted criminal, but hey. At least I learned a thing or two about her new target from Ahab. I'm sure Milo and Raoul can use that somehow. I close my eyes and sigh into my pillow, before my bed lowers underneath me. Is it collapsing? Was Ahab that heavy? I rub the sleep out of my eyes. No, it's definitely not collapsing. It's freaking sinking! Into... into the floor? I hold on to my sheets for dear life. My bed turns and it's almost vertical, and both me and the sheets fall down to another angled surface. Another one of those slides? Why in my bedroom? It only takes a moment of hurting down at top speed for I meet my old friend, the mat in the computer room. Oof! And my pelvis already wasn't doing so good after last night. Can you please start warning before you do that? My phone thuds on the mat next to me. At least I don't have to go home to pick that up anymore. Raul Emilo, for once, is silent. Raoul's got his hand clasped over his mouth. Milo's just standing there, though I can hear his beak grinding from all the way over here. What's uh, wrong? Raoul tugs at his collar. His face is about as red as his tie. 
Well... Him. I look down. Oh, right. I grab my sheets and pull them over me, avoiding any potential sticky places they have left. It's your fault. I wasn't expecting my bed to turn into a theme park ride. You're right. We were wondering where you were. I clearly not getting ready for work. You are lucky this is not a 9 to 5 job. For information, I was investigating the gown all night. I see. It must have been a difficult task to perform in undergarments. I would investigate a fancy shower and change of clothes. That would be appreciated, yeah. I feel much better after finally getting a chance to freshen up and brush my teeth. So this is what rich people body wash smells like. Gotta say, I'm a fan. I'll just bike over from now on if you don't mind. Oh, apologies, Spot, but time is of the essence. We must crack case after all. Any new discoveries? Well, I was up all night looking at the security footage, but couldn't find the little devil anywhere. So though he went off the grid the moment he left the bar after the fight. I checked business card for fingerprints and looked into targeting government records, but it proved unsuccessful. Did you manage to discover anything in your, uh, uh, what did you call it? Personal investigation? Just a little bit. I didn't feel help. Don't ask where I got the information from. Don't ask where I got the information from. Where did you get information from? I might be able to get away with white lies when it comes to most of my friends. This bird can smell bullshit from a mile away. A scrutinising glare offers no escape. Um. Remember when Raoul said he wished he could ask Ahab some questions? Milo's eyes narrow so hard one could almost mistake them for being closed entirely. Well, while I was undercover, back when all this started, he gave me his phone number. You didn't. Yeah, called him and told him to meet me. I know what happened. Fuck. You do? Yes. You have not been entirely forthcoming with truth, Discount. I'm not. You seem tired. You had developed a strange way of walking. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. You forcefully interrogated Ahab alone and forced him to tell you Cambo's whereabouts. What were your methods? Uh, I will have you know torture is illegal in Batavia. I did make him scream pretty loud, but I don't know if that counts. Out with it. What did you learn? Well, the long and short of it is he specialises in stealing fashion and materials. Silks, leathers and the like. The rarer the better. Does not always go for stuff based on market value. He's also the one to approach Ahab, not the other way around. How do you know we can trust Saltwater Syndicate on this? He seemed pretty pissed at him, to be honest. Kept talking about him breaking some code of honour. Ahab does fancy that code of his. Seeing as they said our current lead at the moment, I say it at least bears a little investigating, wouldn't you say? That is true. It could help determine next course of action. I had a similar idea, so I texted Lou. I should hope you have learned less than about involving civilians by now, Discount. Listen, they already know who we are at this point, and be honest. If anyone knows what this guy's next target could be, or hell, what, even what happened to the gown, it's them. It's our best option. We're going to talk to them anyway. My phone buzzes. Oh, perfect timing. Raoul and Milo shoot me a simultaneous look of expectation. Lou says they've managed to get some dirt. So now's as good a time as any to head over the Han. We can talk about our findings there. The Han? The place I told you about last night before I left. It's a bar. More than a bar, really. It's a second home. They actually have a big event going on today. They've been open for 25 years. Oh. He fidgets. Something wrong? No, it's... I mean... Do you wish to stay at base, Master Bravard? Well, I do need to swing by the flower shop for... later. Well, I suppose I could go if it's with the good of the mission. Oh, right. 
Technically, Raoul Brevard has never been seen in public. I guess there might be some secret identity shenanigans going on. You can tell me what's wrong. I won't judge. Well, just don't deal well with crowds, is all. It's something I've had since I was little. It's all a bit overwhelming for me. Is that why you stare to the public eye? Well, it certainly plays a part. Well, I like creating, inventing, building a bright future for the citizens of Schiffersburg. I'm not one for meetings and long discussions about nothing in particular with lots of different folks. So I leave it to the spokespeople. I handle considerable amount of Master Brevard's corporate communications. Is there anything this bird can't do? You know, back when I worked for the company, some people thought you didn't exist at all. Well, that's how I refer things, in a way. What about the Dawnhound? Seems to deal just fine with crowds when we're working. The Dawnhound is different. He's smart, strong, outgoing, brave. When I put on the mask, that's how I feel, too. I think I felt something similar when I first saw myself in costume yesterday. And when we got the dress back from Ahab and his goons. That was a hell of a rush. Yeah, will give me a bit of courage, that's for sure. I'd be happy to return the favour. I extend a hand to my boss. Well, I don't know, Spot. Come on, it's for the good of the mission. Besides, you did promise Lou you'd bring them up to speed on my situation. This is true. I do not break promises. Well, if we must. The Harn is bustling with activity by the time we roll up. I guess Lou must have helped Willem get some buzz on social media. I haven't met most of these folks before. Then again, most of the regulars aren't used to showing up this early. Rawls slows down as he takes in his surroundings. He's sweating bullets and it isn't even hot. This is a mighty big crowd. I hope it does not put too much strain on you, Master Brevard. Oh, no, Milo, it's fine. It doesn't look fine. Are you sure you're okay? Raoul nods, avoiding eye contact. I'm just out of my element. I don't leave the house without my costume all that often. He looks at the ground. Hey, it's all right. These are all good people. I have to say, I don't expect Barlet to be your favourite place. Heh, <laughs> you mean didn't expect me to be gay? Alex, we have lived long lives so far. We have travelled world. Who you love is of no concern to us, only fighting ability and mind. Thanks, that's actually kind of sweet. Only meant I expected you to be homebody. You being gay was quite obvious. Add Gaydar to Milo's long list of talents. Do you often visit? You could say that, almost every week since college. Oh, well, my shoddy attempt at college. You're going to love the drinks here. Just go find Willem. The roost is easy to find, what with the fancy dress and the huge fake lashes he's wearing. I guess that corset ended up fitting after all. He notices me and heads in my direction. I can hear his stiletto heels even above the din of the crowd and the generic gay house music. Well, fanny owl. Oh, nice to see your face around these parts. And you just a sweet little apple and the apple pie. He pinches my cheeks. Yeah, walking mighty funny, love. Something the matter? Uh, I'm not. He clicks his tongue. Can I do with that big boy you brought over for drinks last night? I whisper. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm expecting him to press further, as he usually does. He's only moved on to Raoul and Milo. Raoul is twiddling his thumbs while Milo's as stone-faced as ever. They're broad company. Oh, some strapping boys, too. Are these my friends? Milo and Ra uh, Raymond. My name's Ray. It is good to make your acquaintance. Guys, this is Willem. He owns... I do beg your pardon, good sir. The name's Mother Hen, owner of this little watering hole, pride of Schiffersburg, I always say. Uh, sorry, Mother Hen. Gotta say, he's nailing his accent. Those acting classes for seniors he took a couple of years back must be paying off. Yeah, don't worry, Al. 
You can call me Charlene. He giggles behind a big fan I didn't even know he had. Have you seen Lou anywhere? Sure have. Huh? Came in a little while ago. Ain't been waiting long. He points to the bar. Lou's sitting in the corner away from the main crowd. A holographic screen in front of them shows a bunch of kittens, all pretty much look identical to them, babbling away. Guess they were their other parent for the weekend. Thanks. How's the party coming along? Oh, swell, just swell. Yeah, there's many customers since we had that summer sin leather party last year. Oh boy, do I remember that one. That's where I met Lars. Ah, Lars. I'll never forget those six beefy arms. Well, I have trouble keeping up just by myself. Speaking of, you boys want anything to drink? He looks at Raoul and Milo. Seeing as you're first timers, drinks are on the house. First timers? Just when I haven't seen you all in here before, I do like taking care of my guests, good sir. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Raoul's gaze flicks between the drinks menu and the bar in general, as if he's not really sure where to look or what to focus on. Don't blame him. Some of the patrons are dressed rather flamboyantly, to put it mildly. Milo, on the other hand, is taken to the heart like a fish to water. He shoots Willem, uh, Charlene, the smell of someone who's been in this kind of place before. Just what has this guy been hiding? I thank you for your generosity, madam. I will have fruity drink with a little pink umbrella. It must be pink. I will accept no substitutes. A mighty fine choice. How about a kinky red raccoon? With a wing some Milo. The crows and skipper beat and simply crosses his legs. That is perfect. Bring us back memories from old days. Old days? Raoul is next. What are you, sir? I can recommend the cocktails. Refined drink for a refined man. Well, a cocktail sounds great. So I have. Uh, what are your options? With them points to a blackboard with the cocktail names on it. I brace myself as I watch Raoul read the names, mumbling under his breath, eyes getting wider every second. Screaming orgasm, sex on the beach. What's a cum shot? No one answers. Well, uh, do you have soda? Uh, I'll have a soda. A soda and a kinky red raccoon. Uh, hop right to it, chickadee. He winks at Raoul, who smiles back, making himself a little smaller. It's definitely not the Dawnhound I know. You sure about this? I will be able to have a place to sit down for a bit. Sorry, just a little... He trails off. Overstimulated? Uh, yes. Hey, don't sweat it. If you want to take a breather outside in a bit, I'd be happy to come along. Raoul finally settles and I see Milo smiling. Okay, uh, I'd like that. Now let's find you that place to sit down. I gesture them to follow me as I take a seat next to Lou. Oh, hey, look guys, it's Uncle Alex. Uncle Alex is here. The kittens on the screen scream in unison. At least I still have fans out there. Hey guys, what's... Uh, what's up to the snaps? Uncle Alex, no one says that anymore. Yeah, Uncle Alex, no one. Sorry, guys, Uncle Alex is still behind the times. I guess I'm not that cool after all. I still say it. But you're old. Wow, low blow. I gently tap Lou on the shoulder and point to Raoul and Milo. They nod. All right, fellas, prepare us to leave a little while, okay? You all be good now. Oh. Bye, Popo. Bye, Uncle Alex. Bye. The kittens wave at me before Lou ends the call. They're growing really fast. Right, wait. I cannot be taller than I am by the time I hit puberty. Can't imagine seven kids all entering puberty at the same time. That's what you get with litters. I've known Lou since we were teenagers. I don't think the world is ready for seven copies of them at that age. Anyway, hi, a long time no see. Nice to see you here too, Mr. Milo, Mr. Dawnhound. Raoul perks ever since he hears his code name. Enough to look Lou in the eye, at least. 
Oh, good to see you as well. My apologies for the trouble at the gallery yesterday. It must have given you quite the fright. Hey, I wasn't the one getting hurled through the air. I'm fine. Speaking of, can you finally tell me what's been going on with Alex? Um, uh, Milo, I think it's better if you explain. Milo gives the bar a quick look around, no doubt making sure no one else is in the earshot. He pushes his glasses up and turns back to us. It is a long story, but short version is discount. Alex works for us. He looks at Raoul, and more precisely for Dawnhound. The Rottweiler seems to come alive a bit, its focus shifting to our group as opposed to looking for the nearest window to make his escape from. Our mission is to keep City of Schiffersburg safe, safe from criminals too difficult for police to deal with. Criminals would require a different approach to take down. Lou raises a non-existent eyebrow. You mean less legal ones? There are times one must circumvent law to do what is right. How oh, I spandex, apparently. It's not spandex. All of us look in Raoul's direction. It's the loudest he's been since we walked in here. The scoundrels threaten our fair city need to know they are heroes who will not stand idly by while they engage in their villainy. He balls up a fist, pummel it in the air like an old theatre actor. There are people who will fight for justice when the police can't or won't. The look on Lou's face tells me they're not entirely convinced. You mean you want criminals to know they'll have to deal with, uh... They lean on their hand. Are they Dawn Hound? Precisely so. We're still working on the branding. And how is it that Alex of all people got roped into this? I've known him forever and he hardly seems like hero material. Hey! Milo seemed to take pleasure in Lou's remark, judging by his smirk. Mr. Roy his rookie, yes. But he's not without certain qualities. He looks good in rubber? It's not rubber either. Ahem. Alex demonstrated his cunning tenacity in a most dire situation. His tail starts wagging, almost swatting a smaller mouse walking past his bar stool in the face. He confronted an armed criminal to protect an innocent bystander without hesitation and saved her life in the process. I wouldn't say entirely without hesitation, but I'll take the compliment. He may be inexperienced, but he has what it takes to be a hero. That, I promise. I don't know if he's speaking the truth or it's sunk cost fallacy talking at this point. Lou ponders his statement for a moment, punctuating their thoughts by slurping their tea loudly. How are we talking about the same Alex? The one who broke down crying on the roller coaster for five year olds because, and I quote, the drop was too steep? It was steep. It was a metre tall. I swear it was taller. But I suppose you did save Mrs. De Bruyne's bacon that night. And you're absolutely sure you like this career switch? I know it's kind of out there, Lou, but it feels right. They sigh. All right, I'll buy it for now. At a discount, but I'll buy it. But do you really think the scum of the earth is going to quiver in fear seeing you dressed up in... They look in Raoul's direction. Why the advanced materials? Can't tell you the details, I'm afraid. Industry, secret and all. Right. I'm not going to pretend li like I get it completely. But if you're sure this is the right job for you, then who am I to judge? Besides, you seem to be in good hands. Lou glances at Milo. Get claws, paws. Your hands is good. I was just making sure. I will keep Dawnhound and Deskhand safe. I mean, if something happened to Raoul, we'd both be out of a job. We'll make him no mistake. Or Sheffersburg, the populace and criminals alike will know our names. Oh. Lou rubbed their paws together, not entirely unlike a cartoon villain concocted in a dastardly scheme. If you want to get the word out there, you've got to work on your media presence. You need people to see you. What are you getting at? They crack their knuckles, audible even over the loudness of the crowd and the generic gay house music they're still playing. Time to put my bachelor's in marketing to work. Since when do you have a bachelor's in marketing? I did it for a couple of years now. I've been working on doing my off time at the reception desk. 
Just don't tell Bravard I said that. My eyes are drawn to Raoul's in spite of my best efforts. He doesn't seem to take umbrage. You need a person who knows what's going on in Schiffersburg. I can help. That would be... He taps his chin. Very helpful, actually. Have you guys have a name yet? A name? Who's the comic geek here? Hero teams have names, right? What's yours? The Dawnhound and Duskhound. I have two play. The Dawn Squad. Not punchy enough. A crew for crushing of criminals. What is this, a metal band? Let's forget the names for a sec. Did you get my text last night? You mean the drunk selfie you sent me at twelve? I did. You looked very flattering. The one before that, then? That one took me ten minutes to decipher. Something about wanting inflammation on Camo's whereabouts? That's not what I meant. I know. I figured it probably had something to do with the gown after you mentioned you couldn't get it back. So I messaged Fenner and asked her about it. You got Fenner's phone number? Lou clicks her tongue and finger guns at me. I've still got game. Anyway, come over. Uh, Fenner looked into it but the trail went cold on her end. The name didn't show up in any database and the temp agency website went offline after the robbery. Kemo is pseudonym most likely. Yeah, I was curious too, so I read a volume while I waited for you guys to show up. I'm sorry to wait, but we're unable to make any headway. Well, you've got a super sleuth on the case now. They pull up their screen again. I couldn't find much when I looked up the name alone. They had a similar issue. But when I did some keywords based on Sir Alex texting me, I found some old blog posts. Very old blog posts. I was not have that many views. The algorithm definitely didn't favour this guy. Anything we can use? Just mostly pictures of things he'd made. A lot of very expensive materials on display. Materials you don't just buy at your local fabric store. And just a ton of complaining about how underappreciated he felt. That wasn't the only thing, though. You guys remember when the Hippersburg Museum had the crown jewels on display last year? The ones that got stolen, right? It's all over the news. Every guard got knocked out cold. What's more, no one showed up in the security footage. The Saltwater Syndicate took the blame for it, the time based on circumstantial evidence. Some members got arrested, but the jewels were never recovered. So imagine my surprise when I saw this on Camo's blog. They turned the screen towards us. It shows a mannequin wearing a strangely chunky necklace with a distinctive gem as the centrepiece. That is quite, uh, well, I wouldn't say pretty. That gem to one of the royal scepters, I'm sure of it. He did that to a timeless piece of jewellery. I should have think what he's planning for the money talks gown. Well, our course of action is clear. I agree. It is? First we have to take stock of all the outfits Camo has made. Affirmative. Then we analyse materials used in outfits. And cross-reference them with all reported sets of rare fabrics, garments and jewellery in the past few years. After we're looking to come up commonalities and deviations of thefts. By doing so we can do switch crimes that be committed by perpetrator. We follow that with a thorough investigation of how fashion trends have evolved over time. Finally, we use process elimination to determine most likely target for next heist. Uh, before you go and do all that, uh, mind showing me the card you guys found. A uh, fellow mentioned it. I have it with me. I don't think much use. Milo looked into it. There's nothing we could find. Milo produces from his breast pocket. As he hands it over to Lou, I catch a scent on it that because of all the smoke from the capsule I had noticed before. There's a flower, hibiscus, and lemon. Hold on. I snatch out of Milo's hands for Lou and grab it. Hey, what's the big idea? Sorry, I just... I bring that to my nose. Did one of you spray perfume on this? Well, I don't smell anything. Yeah, neither do I. It's faint. But I'm catching a whiff of something. Flowers and lemon. 
Lemon, you see? He leans over and takes one of the candles sitting on the bar. Don't go burning the place down. I don't intend to. Hold card over flame. Of course, an invisible ink. I do as I'm instructed, and as the card heats up, an image is slowly seared into it. Below it is a text that says, Come find me. That's a logo of some kind? Lou, do you know? I think I've seen that before. Might have to do with the new convention centre? Their face goes blank. Of course. Bonds through bondage. What? It's a big fashion show being held at the new convention centre tonight. That's where he's going to be. How can you be so certain? I'd agree. It's easy to jump to conclusions, but to dive into the heart of a criminal mind isn't easy. It's a self-proclaimed fashion king who wants to build a name for himself. Some of the world's most famous fashion designs will be shown off their creations made with rare and expensive materials. So it's a once in a decade event, highly exclusive. We might have trouble getting in then. Getting in may be the least of our worries. I can only assume this card was a direct challenge to whoever discovered it. That might mean trouble. How so? Think about it. We recover the capsule from the syndicate, but Kamo had no way of knowing we'd be the ones to take it. Meaning he was confident enough he dared to challenge Ahab and his crew directly. He must be a dangerous adversary. It is possible he is not operating alone. It's a risk we need to take. I agree. We made a promise. I refuse to let this wretched comedian give us a slip. I'd be letting a lot of people down if I back down now. Our attention shifts we notice Willem heading our way. Alright, sorry it took so long, but I got you all your tricks. A free drink for the handsome birdie. I am grateful. And a soda for the big boy. Oh, big boy. Oh, yeah, uh, thank you kindly. I watch as Mila twirls a little drink and round round between his index finger and thumb, smiling to himself. He takes a sip and closes his eyes, smacking lips he does not possess. This is exquisite. Why, thank you, sir. You want to take a break, I mean, Charlie? Bloody hell, I do. This corset squeezes my organs like a lemon. Do you require assistance? I am a mixologist myself. Willem collects himself and his voice immediately goes back up several octaves. Oh no, sugar, that won't be necessary. Got an extra helper today. Thank the Lord up above. He should be here any minute now. Oh. Oh. The door opens, the whole world stops as we all turn to see who's standing in the doorway. It's a mandrill, about as tall as I am. His frame casts an ominous shadow into the interior. You see you're all enjoying yourselves? His gruff voice and commanding presence are inescapable. His eyes run over the crowd. Ain't ya? With her on the back of panic bristles, he takes a few slow, menacing steps into the bar. He could cut the tension in the air with a knife. He takes a deep breath, bearing his huge canines. A lot of people in here today. Several of the patrons scatter the gathered of his way. One of them lets out a startled yelp as he brushes past them. The rest hold their breath, trying desperately to go unnoticed. His eyes meet mine. I swallow. Shit, I wasn't counting on this. Well, if it ain't you, let's run into you here. He walks up to me in long strides. I can feel Raoul tensing up again. Who is this guy? I can ask you the same thing. He stops in front of me, his eyes fixed between me, me, Raoul and Milo. Just on, I see my son's making some new buddies. Sorry if I frighten you. Tend to have that effect on folks for some reason or another. He laughs as hard as he always does. A lifetime of this and he still doesn't know how to make a good first impression. My name's Barend. Barend de Roy. Uh, de Roy? Raoul looks at me. 
Yeah, the mandrel in front of us who laughs. Oh, family resemblance didn't give it away. He swings one of his arms around me and gives me a nookie. Hey, hey, stop. I'm not a kid anymore. I push him away. But you'll always be my boy. Raoul looks on, confused as Lou waves dad over. Valent! No! Oh. He hugs him as the rest of the bar resumes party and the threat haven't subsided. How are you doing, kiddo? Very good, all things considered. How are the kids? They've been behaving? I won't stop talking about you since you showed them the fire truck. Ah, I was right happy to. Don't think I'll bring their friends next time. I'll even tell the boys that I'm sounding the old siren. He proceeds to make siren noises. He always has to include the siren noises. What are you doing here, Dad? Yeah, there was party and he's going to be here. So I came a-running. Why? Ain't a man allowed to come support his son? Even rock my rainbow pins. Look. Oh, uh, you are. Just wasn't really expecting it. This isn't exactly your scene. Ah, look like a deer caught in headlights, son. I'll be up and all way out a bit today. Just have fun with your friends and pretend I ain't here. That's going to be damn near impossible. I'm as pleased as punch to have you, sir. Charlene, you're even prettier than the last time I laid eyes on you. Oh, your hound. Willem giggles. At least that thing's supposed to be a giggle. It's more like a shriek, so shreds and miracle her glasses aren't shattering. Ever since I came out as gay and Willem offered to talk to my dad to help explain what I was going through, there have been two peas in a pod. It's funny thinking back on it now. I was scared, confused, worried about what he'd say, how he'd feel. When Willem and he finished talking, he just hugged me the tightest he'd done since he and Mom adopted me. As weird as he gets sometimes, I've always looked up to him. He ran the Hitlersburg Fire Brigade on his own for a couple of decades, as he often likes to say. He isn't bragging in the least either. He's the kind of guy who'd go in and carry people out of burning buildings. The kind of guy who knew everyone. The kind of guy who'd stick his neck out of complete strangers even if he got nothing in return. The kind of guy I wasn't. Who are your friends, Alex? Dad's face is close to mine. Not every day I see you hanging out with boys in spiffy clothes. They ain't loan chugs, are they? Or is this one of them uh, sugar daddy situations? Dad? I often see you dating two at once. Dad, stop. Oh, there was that one time. Dad, no. Ugh, I knew this was going to happen. These are friends from work. My boss is this new place I'm working in, actually. Well, I, uh, I assumed. Yes, you assumed. <clears throat> nice to meet you, folks. Any friend of my boys is a friend of mine. He extends a hand in between them. Milo's the first one to shake it. Emilio Trostov. The two of them are locked in their handshake for a few moments. They both narrow their eyes as they glint in Milo's they've seen before during training. Looks like they're both straining a bit. Are they having a contest? Finally they let go, a big grin spreading across Dad's face. Oh, that's some grip you got. You must have lifted some serious weights in your day. If you only knew. I take pride in body. It is obvious you do as well. Ah, I've been better. I don't plan to lose to any pipsqueaks in here. Firefighter's honour. Next up is Raoul, who's still trembling a little from my dad's entrance. I don't blame him in the least. I'm Ra Raymond. That shakes Raoul's hand as well, far more gently. I'm thankful you read the air. Nice to meet you, Ra Raymond. So good I call you Ray? I think I'll call you Ray. Mm-hmm. Good, good. I like your sense of style, Ray. Dad, no. Make a lot of money? Dad! I bury my face in my paws. Calm down, Alex. Just having a friendly little chat. I know this isn't just a friendly little chat. Many of my past boyfriends would agree. 
I'm glad you had my bottle having a bravade. He's a hard worker. I'm sure anyone here will tell you that. I always stand right by Gaffrey takes a tumble. Oh, I agree. He's been a big help to us. All right, Milo. Milo's returned to twirling his little umbrella. A second passes where he notices he's been asked a question. He tucks it into his breast pocket. He is making progress, yes. Apple did not land too far from three, it seems. Maybe it's a drink talking. I can't tell whether it's a compliment or a jab. Probably a bit of both. Good to hear, good to hear. Well then, can you put on an apron and fix these lovely little ladies some delicious drinks? I'll be right there. He grins at us. Duty calls. Oh, it was nice meeting you, Mr. Hurry. Chucks, pleasure's all mine. Oh, and Alex. Hmm? Be sure to call your mom from time to time, okay? She keeps asking me about you, and I ain't your secretary. I sigh. I oh, will do, Dad. Any reason you don't want to talk to her? I keep meaning to. But... I just forget, okay? I'm sure she'd love to hear from you. What do I even tell her? How are you doing, for starters? What about your new job? She'd freak. Think about it, kiddo. Now, if you don't mind, your old man's going to earn his keep. Say hi to Max for me. And he's off. I take a deep breath. Well, seems like a nice man. A little intense, maybe. Intensely embarrassing. You know he means well, Al. He's just a bit much sometimes. Well, if I might ask, who's this Max he asked you to say hi to? Oh, just my roommate. His mom's a former model and... Hold on. I realise something. Of course, Max. I know we're going to get into that fashion show. Do you now? Yeah. Now we've no time to lose. Let's be off. But fruity drink is still half full. Oh, we've plenty of time for fruity drinks once we catch that comedian, my feathered friend. I say we join spot. Onwards! Welcome to my humble abode. Just take off your shoes, okay? I vacuumed the other day. Didn't think I'd ever have Raul and Milo over, but there's a first time for everything. I decided to lead into my room first. So, this is where you live? Interesting. Sorry, it's no mansion. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. He fidgets, looking at the shelves. It's not all that impressive, but I do have a lot of my comics and games on display. Well, I didn't take you for a collector, Alex. Nothing special, just picked up a few things here and there. The wildest thing I have is one of those model kits. Look. I pong a little dinosaur on my shelf. God, that one took me so many all-nighters to put together. I think I went through three bottles of glue. Sticky fingers for a week. Well, I always wanted to try one of those. The man who built a soup robot has never put a model together before? Well, surprisingly, no. I invent things for a living, but rarely for personal pleasure. You'll have to show me sometime. I would hate to disrupt team bonding, but what is purpose of visit? You mentioned getting an entry to the fashion show. My roommate's mom used to be a fashion model, so his family gets invitations to these huge events all the time. Pretty sure Max's mom made a long list of connections, the only thing is keeping her landlord from kicking him out. We can enter the show without causing a scene. Excellent idea. What makes you think he'll be cooperative? He's going to give them to me this morning, but I don't think they'd be useful for anything yet. You guys wait here, I'll be right back. I head into the living room. Surprisingly, Max is sitting at the computer today, though I still hear anime coming from the speakers. He swivels the chair around when he sees me approach. Dearly, how early? Uh, just for a bit. I had something I wanted to ask you. You can't just text me, you know. Not with how flaky this guy can be. Just wonder if I could set up those tickets to the fashion show? Oh yeah, for sure, dude. Here you come around. 
It'd be good for you, you know, dude. You don't really have the best fashion sense. What's wrong with my clothes? You rock that hoodie and sweatpants combo every day. I have other clothes. Other hoodies and other sweatpants? Shit, he's kind of right. Anyway, I think it's on the table. They're all yours. Thanks a lot, man. I gave you some nectar when I can. That'd be awesome. Oh, I know you weren't hungry this morning. I thought you might like some apple pie later, so I put some in the fridge. You didn't use tomatoes this time, right? Oh, no, no tomatoes this time. It's the recipe off the internet. Max, following a recipe? I'm impressed. It's Grandma's ramen apple pie. <laughs> and that's my cue to leave. I think I'm good. Thanks. Gotta go. See yourself. More for me. But you can't even... You know what? Never mind. I head back to my bedroom, tickets in hand. I just hope me and Raoul haven't seen anything unfortunate yet. I haven't exactly had time to clean. Thankfully, they don't seem too interested in prying. Though Milo seems to be looking rather intently at my retro station. Are you a gamer, Milo? Not in recent decades. But I remember this one from youth. Oh, that takes me back. I used to love it when I was in high school. Well, we can play sometime, once we're not on a mission. Speaking of, I got the tickets. Excellent. The only thing left to do is return to base and prepare. We are likely to see combat. Deadful Camo will give up dress easily. Won't we stand out in the crowd in our uniform? Not entirely true. He brings up a holographic screen. Notice theme of fashion show. The tighter the better. Restraints, cuffs, leather and harnesses from the ba form the basis of a legendary after dark fashion show inspired by the wondrous world of bondage. Yeah, it describes our gear picture pretty accurately, if it was made that way unintentionally. Well, good. That means we'll have all our equipment at our disposal should any trouble arise. Did you even hear the word bondage? I will join you for this mission. It would be useful to have eyes on ground. How are you going to blend in? I don't think the butler suit's going to cut it. And we only have two tickets. You underestimate me, Descount. I will find suitable costume and gain entry for occasion. Do not worry. This I gotta see. Are you heading back to the car then? Well, there's a faster way to return to base from here, I'm sure you know. Please don't tell me you mean the slide. That's exactly what I mean. It's fast, efficient, fun. It's efficient at making me lose my lunch. I will make separate arrangements on my end. I will see you at venue. He's buried out of the room when Raoul's already taken the tiny remote control out of his pocket and named it at my bed. Zero impulse control. He watches the bed sink to the floor like a kid on Christmas morning. So oh, that's what it looks like. You're going in first. Well, don't mind if I do. He takes a running jump down the hole. I hear him whoop and horror all the way down for I decide to join him myself. I knew he'd be busy here. This place is crawling with so many people it might be a safety hazard. Dad would call the inspector and lecture the owners for hours if he were here. Ugh. Finding out that Liz is going to be like looking for a needle in a haystack at this rate. At least we sort of fit in. We're not the only ones in crazy clothes, that much is certain. Collars, masks, harnesses, corsets. It's basically anything goes in here. I'd almost say we look plain in comparison. A large dapper butterfly with majestic wings approaches us a couple of feet past the entrance. He's got a pair of arms tied up in front of him. On brand for this kind of thing. Good thing he's got two free ones to carry a tray of drinks with. A drink, sir? Oh, uh, no thanks. Maybe later. As you wish, sir. Uh, enjoy the show. He spins on his heels and goes back to catering to the other guests. And even the staff is dressed for the occasion. I need to figure out where to start looking. This crowd's a little much, even for me. And the less said about their choice of music, the better. 
I'd take generic gay house music over this any day. Let's try to get somewhere quiet. We push our way through the crowd for what feels like an eternity. The more efficient we try to be, the more the universe seems to want to throw a wrench in our plans. We're no closer to the set of the crowd when a loud squeal stops us in our tracks. It's an Akapi, wearing an artistic interpretation of what amounts to precious little more than a thong and a leash. Who? Who are you wearing? They've got a heavy accent, but I can't quite place the country. Uh, who? They're asking who designed your outfit. Oh, I did. Darling, simply darling. You must make me a piece sometime, I insist. Can you give me a twirl? Raoul awkwardly spins in place while Akapi sips a glass of champagne. Exquisite, mon ami. I think he'll be walking the catwalk later. Oh, I just guessed. And it's really got to move on. Places to be. Of course, darling. Just in case you do it with some time on your hands tonight, I'll be in the VIP section up front. The VIP section? What else? It's where the brightest stars gather. The cream of the crop, if you will. They pass Raoul a business card. With how little they're wearing, I don't want to know where they pulled it from. And disappear into the crowd. A few similar interactions later, I'm starting to get frustrated despite the frequent compliments. This isn't getting us anywhere. There's too many people. Well, our target's stealthy enough as it is. It's me look here yet. We could use some backup. I've been wondering that myself. You should have contacted us by now. He taps his earpiece. Raven 3, do you copy? Over. A few seconds pass before the line crackles and Mila's voice comes in. I copy you loud and clear. Has the eagle landed yet? Over. I do not understand. Is Kazoo here yet? Ah, Camo. Him, yeah. As a matter of fact, yes, I have served him drinks. You served him drinks? Getting close to target requires subtle touch not everyone possesses. And I am only one among three of us he does not recognize. How do you even get close to him? A matter of simple. Infiltrated VIP section as waiter. So he's with the... How did that gentle person put it? Cream of the crop? Did you manage to pick up any new info, Raven 3? Over. He's carrying a large, mysterious bag on his person. I was not able to discern if it contained money talk scale. However, I did manage to place a small tracking device on it. Tracking radius is small, but if it moves, we will know. Can you read out with us so we can formulate a strategy? Over. I am on my way. Excellent work, Raven 3. Over and out. Well, we know Kamo is here and he's got a bag. Well, that's a start. I should make a retrieve from the gown just a tad easier on us. Barely. So he tells where to go from here, though. Well, it tells us he's carrying or plan to carry something important at the very least. And how many people have you seen carrying large bags? Yeah, more than a few. Don't think he's already stolen what he came here for, do you? I highly doubt that. Ah! When did Milo sneak up on us? Whoa! Um. Ah, glad you found us. Are we just not going to mention Milo's outfit? That scene doesn't leave a lot to the imagination. But I'm still imagining plenty of things. You look puzzled, this count. Oh! This little surprise is all. Surprise, let's call it that. I am master of stealth and subterfuge. I can see that. Though I am, how you say, a ducking bunch. Most of the stuff is butterflies. What's the situation? Kemo is on premises, moving about slowly. I don't believe he has found what he's here for yet. He has been conversing with guests and designers, making small talk. 
No doubt trying to build rapport with people and trying to find out exactly who's carrying what. Precisely. VIP sections for people presenting the show, as well as distinguished guests. It is also near backstage area, where important costumes are kept under close watch by security. Well, it's not like they steal anything from that place directly. I agree. It would be too risky. So what would his plan be? There's too many people even for a master thief like him. No, I wouldn't be so sure. He's trying to make friends here. I can think of a few ways he might go about it. Think back to what Lou said. I didn't mean likely being after rare and expensive materials or outfits. Yes, what better place to learn who has what than during the fashion show? He can observe his targets and plan to take what he needs accordingly. I ever heard him talking earlier. I'd not be surprised if he plans to follow targets into dressing rooms for ambush. So he's been buttering people up only to take their life's work? Man, what a nasty little sneak. We won't let it get to that. He'll have to go very carefully to pull off his plan thievery. And the time of Crummer is most vulnerable when he's laser focused on his target. How do you even get in there? I don't seem to get an invitation. VIP tickets don't exactly come cheap. You're yeah, most likely snuck in. No, he was in possession of ticket. Maybe it was forged? Not possible. Security checks thoroughly at entrance. Then how are we going to get in? I know we can fit in as waiters like Milo did. Oh, I can think of something. You're not going to smash a window again, are you? No. We'll pretend we're there to participate. Models don't need tickets, right? Do you honestly think that'll work? If they keep such a close eye on tickets, they probably already vetted the models, too. We will need to get close enough to come out to give chase. I trust you'll think of something. I will go on ahead. Much as I tried to argue against it, two minutes later we're standing at the gate of the VIP section. It's definitely a lot less crowded past this point, and I can see why. Nothing but fancy suits and champagne allowed over here. A butterfly, even more imposing than the waiting room before, thoroughly inspects everyone going in and out. Well, you're going to have to be sneaky. Very sneaky. And who might you be, good sirs? Ah, um, where? I throw Raoul a look. We're well, scheduled to walk the runway a little while. No odd. It's only dressed the part, and informed about someone of your. Looks Raoul up and down. Uh, Calibre participating. Well, you would be surprised. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so it would seem. Listen, I'd love to stay in chat. The boss will have our heads. We don't chop her hair and makeup. All right, all right, fine. I just need your names. I'll go confirm whether you're allowed in. Okay, think fast. I just hope Raoul catches on. Ugh, Raymond, he doesn't know who we are. What? Oh. Hmm, yes, my dear Alexander, so it would seem. Never in my life been treated so rudely and unfairly. Why, I've half a mind to up and leave right now. We were told this would be a professional event. Where's the, um, the... The professionalism. Nowhere to be found, my dear Raymond. Uh, my dearest sir, you are talking to the twin stars of Batavia. Have a bit of decorum. Descended from royalty. Psst. On the royal's hairs. Foreign royalty. We have graciously decided to take the stage and elevate this event. And you dare repay our kindness with such cruelty? Despicable. Your employer will rue the day, good sir. We were personally sent by Katerina Ambrosia Koninkin's heart divorce. And I believe you me, she has the resources to end your sorry career. Oh, Max's mom won't learn about me invoking a name like that. I have a major problem on my hands. Raymond, we are leaving. Fine, you may enter. Just don't let me catch you harassing any of our stream guests. Thank you verily, I say. I strut into the VIP area with all the bravado I can muster, Raoul following closely behind. We're very close to the catwalk now. 
No sign of cameo yet, though I do spot some folks who obviously have more money to spend than I do, but it lightly. Those must be the big fashion designers and entourages. Lou would be able to pick these guys out of a crowd, but they all look the same to me. I have to say, I don't feel right about lying. You're the one who said we should pretend to be part of the show. I know. Doesn't mean I can't feel bad about it afterwards. I doubt our charm and good looks alone will have gotten us in. But we soon do get our fair share of compliments from some of the guests. Still, a hero should uphold the virtues of truth and justice. I agree with this count. Ah! My heart nearly jumped out of my chest as I turned around to face Milo. How does he always catch me by surprise? I haven't witnessed this kind of style since my childhood days of sneaking into the kitchen to pill for snacks at night. Why do you guys always sneak up on me? The crow doesn't even acknowledge my outburst. White lies are sometimes necessary to uphold cover, correct? I'll have you put it that way. It's for a good cause, Dawnhound. Emilo, when's the show starting? He checks his wrist. When he remembers he's not wearing a watch, or when he clothes at all, in fact, he sighs. I do not know exact time. It should be any minute now, though. I wonder bet he'll try to use it as a distraction to enact his scheme. We shall be at the ready. The last couple of words that leave his mouth are drowned out by music playing over the speakers next to the stage. Ladies, gentlemen, everyone outside the binary and in between. Are you ready? The crowd roars. Welcome, one and all, to the Bonds Through Bondage event, where... Raul oh, checks his tracker. I take a peek over his shoulder. He's very close. Unfortunately, the crowd's gotten a bit thicker. The old man of folks, including Nikapi, from earlier gathering near the catwalk. Almost all of them are carrying large, weird bags. I don't know how I'm going to find Kaboom. Come on, come on, showtime. I'm grabbed from behind. When I turn my head, I see it's a butterfly from earlier, the one at the gate. Wait, but I... You're on all right? Come on, the show's about to start. The pale and purple collection's up first. He pushes me up to the edge of the catwalk through the crowd. The model's already started walking. I see the butterfly count down before he gives me a prod and urges me to climb up. If we know other option, no help from Raul or Milo, I do. I feel my cheeks and body burn under all these spotlights. Hundreds, not thousands of eyes drilling into me. Just as many cameras pointing right at me. I look around the crowd in the VIP section. I spot Raoul and Milo immediately. Give him hell, spot! It's for you to say, you're not the one having to do this. I notice one person standing at the very edge of the VIP crowd. He blends in with the environment, and when he spots me, he seems to almost dive out of my line of sight. I stop in my tracks. There's no doubt about it. It's Ka... Ka... Uh, Kablooey. The model behind me, a tall, handsome rabbit, walks right into me. A nearby marten and fish stop in their tracks as well. What are you doing, kid? Come on, keep walking. That's him! I point at the chameleon. Milo and Raoul notice too. Clear the way! That man's a thief! So then I said, I ain't monkeying around. <laughs> oh man, I'd love to see the look on his face after. Oh, it's priceless. Hmm. What you watching over there, Willem? As this fashion show going on at the new convention centre. Thought I'd tune in. Ladies, gentlemen, everyone outside the binary and in between. Are you ready? Oh, looks like we're just in time for the show to start. Well, it's one of them drag shows I heard you talking about. Yeah, not quite. I don't know what's the best way to put it. Uh, Lou? I think this is a costume show scene more towards. Oh well, you'll see. Looks like the model lined up on the stage. 
Ah. This show's all about lots of different kinds of uh, bondage gear. Well, I never imagined you could wear harnesses like that. And they still ain't wearing much else underneath. Haha, <laughs> not like half the people in here tonight. Yeah, if you think about it, it's really just... Hold the phone. That guy with the spots looks familiar. Oi, is that hell up there? Oh no. Alex is up there? It could be anyone. Clear the way, that man's a thief. Anyone. Yeah, Lord, that is him. What's he doing? Hold on, is that Ray from earlier over there? Hello. Oh, do you reckon you know what's going on? I promise not to... Fine. So apparently it started with... The crowd in the VOP section parts with a cacophony of gasps and yells. It's absolute chaos. Perfect opportunity to give chase. I jump off the catwalk. I can't see him. Where'd he go? Draco says he went that way. The backstage area. Milo, where does that lead? It leads to the stairwell. He is most likely trying to escape from roof. Not if we can help it. So we run up to it, the door to the backstage area opens and closes, clicking shut all on its own. I can only just stop myself from slamming into it. Did you just see that? This is an automatic door, is it? It's like he turned invisible. Incredible. I've never seen anything like that in my life. It's like the Stinger issue 56, Revenge of the Invisible Iguana Man. If I recall correctly, the Stinger ended up losing that fight. So we don't end up following his example. Let's put into the set of stairs we could take. That'll well, cost us what precious little time we have. And we have none to lose as it is. Stand back. Before I can protest, he lifts his leg and stomps the door. Something cracks and the door slips open again. I wonder if I ever get through a mission without Raoul smashing something. My money's on no. I hear someone yell as the equipment clatters the floor in front of us. Kenru flickers into view, having seen he almost tripped over a mannequin. So he was invisible. Long time no see, Kablooey. Camo! It's a camo! Yeah, yeah. What do you think you're doing here? We want the money talks gone back, you long-tongued scoundrel. I'm afraid I can't do that. I have great plans for it, you see. I don't care what kind of fashion statement you're trying to make. You're nothing but a common crook. An unremarkable thug who thinks himself a mastermind. The comedian's big eyes grow even bigger. Then he squints. A common, unremarkable. Seems to have struck a nerve. You snivelling hounds have no idea about the hardships I've faced. Unremarkable, you say. Unremarkable? Try invisible to not be seen or recognised by those around you. Is, uh, is this a uh, low self-esteem issue, or...? Well, low self-esteem doesn't give you the right to go and take things that aren't yours. I was not speaking metaphorically, you absolutely incompetent ignoramus. The comedian seems to shimmer for a second before starting to fade. Wait, he's gone? The boss and I look around frantically. Where? This ability, this accursed... Whoa, that's coming from behind us. I aim my grappling hook at the sound reflexively. How did he... Oh, my life, all I'd ever done was blend in. It comes rather natural as chameleons, as I'm sure even someone as witless as you knows. Not even dear mother and father seemed to see me. They were always too occupied running their company, only ever talking to me, always ruining their perfect image. They weren't even present when I took my first steps. On my first day of school, they left me standing in the pouring rain. I had all the money I could ever need, all the toys, but I needed a family and I had none. The voice quiets down. So, 
I took up sewing in my free time, perhaps hoping if I made something pretty enough that if I accomplished enough they would finally see me. That anyone would. Then one day it happened. I was at the school Christmas gala, determined to show off my best work in front of my entire class. I had spent weeks on that outfit. I was ready. I stepped onto the podium when I was struck by sudden nausea. Perhaps it was the bright lights. Perhaps that night's caviar had not agreed with me. My ears were ringing, but I could make up the cries of where did he go and what's happening? And lo and behold, when I opened my eyes, I discovered I could no longer see my eyelids or my hands. Even the clothes I'd spent such a long time making had vanished. This accursed gift awoke at the worst possible time. Could you imagine, invisible, someone as glorious as myself? I stayed like that for two whole days, unable to see myself even in a mirror. Our family doctor didn't know what to do with me. Hospitals ran tests but found nothing. To this day, I don't know how or why it happened. But father, mother, they called me sick. They called me a freak, a disgrace to the family name. I'd never gotten their attention before, but for this... They disowned me. I was destitute, left to fend for myself, with nothing to my name but our smallest mansion, its staff, and a paltry 500,000 euros. You call that paltry? I do. Obviously, I was desperate. I had to take what I could, consequences be damned. A plebeian such as yourself wouldn't understand. I make a point already. Was this when you decided to take the stealing from the innocent? So impatient. Believe me, I tried to make an honest living. I went to the greatest fashion houses in Europa, talked to the greatest minds in fashion history, asking, nay, begging for the tiniest sliver of recognition. I showed them my finest works, bared my soul to them. I thought I'd finally met kindred spirits, but it did not last. The designs I'd spent countless hours poring over were stolen, put on display without so much as even a mention or a footnote in the magazines. When I spoke up, they only silenced me, smeared me. I was at my wit's end. And so, to put it in terms even you simpletons can understand, I figured that if the universe deemed it necessary to curse me, I might as well make use of it, hmm? It took some time. Eventually I learned to control my new ability. The nausea became tolerable. I still loathe to use it, but being invisible has its perks. I can slip into an establishment unseen, take what I need, and someone more visible than I can take the fall, with no one getting any the wiser. My faithful helpers are my kindred spirits now. So you're not working alone? You can't very well expect me to partake in great heists on my own? Why, I might break a nail! There will always be people as hungry for money and recognition as I am, eager to help me attain my goals. Our mutual friend Ahab was one of them. A remarkably stupid one. He never had a vision as grand as I did. And what would that be? To turn only the most beautiful things into fashion items that will make me a star. I will be seen, metaphorically or otherwise. The world will know the name Camo. And you had best not forget it either. The world will know if they're fraud and thief you truly are. See, the only ones here that know what I've done are you two. And I don't intend to leave you alive much longer if I can help it. Dryas, you'll find we're hard to kill. I'm definitely not. I would. This is not my arena of choice. If you want the gown or what's left of it, you'll have to find me uh, further in. What's left of it? I had to rid myself of some deadweight carried it in here. The fake euro bills had to go. You took it apart? Wait, those were fake bills? Most of the money talks gowns in value lies in its diamond encrusted bodies. I need the diamonds, not some artist's vague political statement on capitalism. 
So why did you come here? To add something else to your collection? And me? Steal something from here? Heavens no. I just came here to have a good time. My entourage already took care of the stealing. How? This place was under lock and key. Who do you think owns said lock and key, my dearest Armation? Who do you think organised this event to begin with? You didn't... Oh, I absolutely did. It took years of planning. Once I'd set the thing up, call the right people. It was like taking candy from a baby. Oh, like taking the money talks gown from Ahab. Was it a seal of the fashion event you're running? And why'd you even host one in the first place? I still haven't caught on, I see. I won't deign to painstakingly track down everyone who wronged me one in. Instead... A dark chuckle echoes through the room. I can just make them come to me. I can breathe in all the fame and adoration has been withheld from me for so long. He reappears inches away from my face, for I can nab him he's gone again, reappearing by the door seconds later. Well, my associates take all the things they can get their hands on from all the designers collaborate on the show. And all the guests. Wallets, jewels, gowns, priceless fashion artefacts. Not to mention the ticket sales are making me a pretty penny as well. He shrugs his shoulders, shaking his head dramatically. A moment I get the impression he's rehearsed in front of a mirror. A market summit is the most exclusive event of the year, and the people will come running, it seems. He scoffs. Not a single one even remembered my face tonight. But that's all right. They will. Soon enough. Everyone who once ignored me. The public, the other designers. They'll rue the day. I will leave them with nothing. They're going to find out you duped them eventually. If my involvement is secret, it'll die with you. By the time the dust settles, I'll be far away from Batavia, making fashion history. Now, I'm afraid I must be taking my leave. My flight's about to depart, you see. A toodles. Gavos, get back here. That's how we end up running up those never-ending stairs. And boy, does this make me regret skipping out on cardio these past many years. My glutes were already weren't doing so hot with last night's activities, but this... Ah, ah, this is torture. I tap my earpiece. Milo? Yes? Are we almost there? No. What about... Uh, what about halfway there? Not quite. I take a second to breathe. Raoul running up ahead of me. Come on, Spot. It's only a couple dozen floors. The boss's excitement is, unfortunately, not contagious. In fact, I'm sure I'll pass out if I need to climb up even one more floor. Actually, can we just skip this? Well, skip what? These blasted stairs. This is technically still my flashback, so why don't we just fast forward a bit? My legs could use some mercy. Well, I don't understand what you're getting at. Flashback? What do you mean, Flash? I snap my fingers. Oh. And so we are once again standing face to face with... The targets. Well, <clears throat> There you are, you treacherous snake. You won't get away this time. You have to admit, I'm surprised you'd be foolish enough to follow me all the way up here. Of course, judging by your fashion sense, making bad choices seems to come rather naturally to you. Give it up, villain. You've nowhere left to run. Alright, this is the moment Milo's been training me for. I assume a position. Shoulder straight, arm outstretched, index finger pointed at the culprit. Just like they do it in the movies. Hand over those diamonds right now! Uh... What was your name again? cannot possibly be serious. You spent all this time prattling about what led you here, and you still can't remember? Look, it even says my name on the screen right now. 
Look, look, right in there. Screen? What screen? You're some little friends, and let's get this over with. All right, fine. Millions rise. Sure enough, there's the butterflies. I recognise a couple of them as the waiters on the show. No! And that's how it all started. As for how it's going, well... To action! The butterflies dive at us one by one in perfect formation. I realise right away these henchmen are in a different league compared to Ahab's bumbling crew. They're coordinated, not a single movement wasted. And their swords are absolutely massive. One hit from those and I'm toast. Oh, finally sliced hat. Form up, back to back. Don't let them catch you from behind. Uh, Dawnhound, sir? Plan? Divide and conquer. Divide? I can't even take on one of those guys. Where did he even find them? I know you can't spot. Now dive. He runs away from my location, and so staring for the point of a sharp sword coming straight at me, I dive the other way. The first butterfly misses me by a hair, crashing into the metal door that leads to the stairwell. That's gotta hurt. The second one does turn in time to chase me down. He's hot on my heels. I attempt to run, but my legs are about to give way. There's barely any feeling left in them. Thanks, Ahab. Thanks, Stairs. Ah! I lose my footing and crash to the ground, arms scraped by the gravel. The tip of the sword is inches away from my face, just as I expect to be impaled. Halt! I hear the zipper grappling hook, for I see Raoul's foot hit the butterfly's face hard from the side. The sword falls to the ground. The butterfly follows. I think it's about time you to fly the coop. No, that doesn't sound right. Hmm. That'll workshop some more one-liners when we get back to base. He pulls me up. Uh, thank you. That was amazing. Don't celebrate yet, Descount. We still have to take care of the rest. The comedian chuckles. I don't think for a second it's going to be easy, you sniveling butts. He snaps his fingers and the four remaining butterflies change formation. And they look like they mean business. The boss and I stand back to back as they circle us slowly, swords pointed right at us. End them, my minions! They start closing in on us. I feel like I have seconds left to live. So, any bright ideas? The cars are surrounded. Oh, we'll have them right where we want them. Huh? I know I'm new at this, but I don't see how... Follow my lead. I can't even finish my thought as Raoul takes my hands and starts spinning us in place faster and faster. The henchmen move in, ready to strike. What are we doing? On the count of three, jump. Wait, what? One, two, three. If I can process what's happening, my feet leave the ground and I think I know what Raoul is thinking. My heart is beating like crazy. Everything feels like it's moving in slow motion. Okay, focus, Alex. I zero in on the butterflies moving towards us. As I'm being swung with terrifying speed, I take aim and ready for a kick. Dawn Tornado! So I manage to avoid throwing up and avoid getting skewered by enemies' blades. I manage to hit three of them back to back, knocking them flat on their asses. The fourth one barely manages to duck in time. Ralph slows down his spin and my feet touch solid ground once more. I'm still in the daze, but the Rottweiler doesn't miss a beat, used to the leftover momentum to wind up for a finishing blow. Uh, lights out! He says it right as he lands a massive clothesline, sending the final henchman flying into a nearby wall. Or at least I think that's what happens. My world's still topsy turvy. All I hear is a deafening crash and the sound of metal landing on gravel. Oh, this is way better than the fashion show. Now what's left is the final boss. 
I sort of come back to my senses. Right. Where is he anyway? Look around frantically, but he's nowhere to be seen. We're done with your lackeys, Camo. Show yours. Raoul's eyes suddenly go wide and close. His body goes limp, collapsing to the floor. Dawnhound! I feel a rush of cold air right next to my head and instinctively dodge out of the way. Whatever it is, it hits the ground like the crack of a whip. Gravel flies through the air as Camo reveals himself. His eyes are wild, focused only on me. Do you know what's so peculiar about the tongue of a chameleon hound? He leans back and his tongue retracts. I am chuckling as he flickers in out of my view. We can extend them from zero to sixty miles an hour in a hundredth of a second. Can you imagine what speed and force like that would do to you? I don't want to find out. I certainly can. So that's it? Do you really want to steal things so bad you're willing to kill me for it? You don't know what it's like to be ignored, forgotten, different. They've taken everything from me. Why should I not be allowed to do the same? I do know what it's like. He takes a swing at me, one I block with my forearm. In the corner of my eye, I look at Raoul. He isn't moving. All my life I've been different. But until a week ago, I didn't even know what I wanted to do or who I wanted to be. There were people who helped me out and showed me I could change. Be better. You're just an ignorant child. He goes invisible again. Raven 3, what's his status? I cannot get read on target. I hear the crunch of gravel and dive out of the way as another invisible force impacts inches away from me, grazing my arm. It stings. Take a random swing, but I only catch air. He appears a few metres in front of me. He starts shimmering again, but instead of disappearing, he simply changes colour. You think you're so special. Look at me. I'm a damn pooch who can't even dress right, much less fight. What the? I'm going to slob on my way to victory. Stop that. Uh, stop that. Yeah, this guy's pissing me off. Enough. I get ready to take up my grappling gun and aim. Don't even have time for that as he disappears again. As if I'd let you. Some gravel flies up and I try to predict if he's going to hit me from up close or from a distance. There's so much going on I can barely focus. He hits me again and I stagger forward. However, there is something. I catch a faint scent that stands out. Something vaguely floral. Hibiscus. Like the card. The briefest moments later and the smell intensifies. It's coming from my left. Put my arms up to guard and man to protect my head. How, how did you do that? The comedian's silhouette becomes solid. He glares at me with contempt. He vanishes before I can answer. I remember Milo's training, but everyone having strengths and weaknesses. Maybe my nose is the key to beating Camel. I can tell he's moving slowly. Next attack will be a big one. The smell of hibiscus changes subtly. There. I catch his fist with my elbow. I stretch out my arm and strike his face with the back of my hand. Ah! This can't be! How could you have seen that attack? I take a slow breath. I didn't. I came to a defensive stance for his next assault. Don't know much longer I can last. I want to take him out as fast as I can. He's quickly moves almost silently, but he can't mask his scent. Got him beating strength. If I can land a few solid hits, I'll have him on the ropes. I see how it is. Fine, so be it. Once again, he's gone. I try to sniff him out, but the scent of hibiscus grows weaker and weaker. Take another swing, there's nothing there. Shit, he figured it out. Probably keeping his distance now. Well, to convey that game, maybe I can use my grappling gun somehow. I dodge backwards, his next strike missing my leg by the tiniest margin, hitting the gravel at my feet. The attacks just keep coming. I can't grab the grappling gun if I'm stuck having to avoid him. At a certain point I try to step back once more and you'll find nothing there. 
without realising it, I've scurried to the edge of the roof. He's got me right where he wants me. Raven 3, help! I close my eyes, praying to all the deities I know the names of that somehow Raoul will wake up. That somehow Milo will burst through that door. Let's count! Enter the light, dog! The chameleon flickers back to my field of view, writes his tongue, hits my chest like a bullet. And I fall right over the edge. A freezing wind rushes past me. It's deafening howl all I can hear as I attempt to stop myself in any way I can. My stomach's in my throat. My heart's pounding. I shoot the grappling gun at the roof, but it doesn't reach. Its cord falls, as do I. I'm not getting out of this. I'm not. I'm... After all the fucking dumb luck it's taken me to get this far, this is it. Fuck. Fuck. Fuck! For a moment, time stands still. In that moment, suspended in midair, I think of Lou. The rooftop grows more distant, I think of Willem. I think of Dad, I think of Mom. Raoul, Milo. My vision gets blurry. I don't want to die. Please don't let me die. Don't let me die. Dad. Mom. So, you have come back to me. The air returns my lungs all at once, knocking the wind right out of me again. I roll to my side and wretch. Nothing comes out. You're quite out of sorts, aren't you? Mm hmm. I sit up, open my eyes. Might as well have kept them closed. I can't see a damn thing. Aren't you going to speak? You were so talkative when last I saw you. You're the voice from before. And that means... I sniff the air. Sure enough, there's that stench. The sound of footsteps, the dripping water. Truth to be told, I wasn't expecting you so soon. The voice shifts in pitch and cadence, like a radio trying to find the right channel. And by falling from a skyscraper, no less. A rather awful way to go, really. Uh, my apologies. What the hell happened? I was up there, now I'm... You're dead, I'm afraid. Dead? Uh, very much so. You took quite the tumble there. <laughs> The accompanying chuckle sounds like nails on a chalkboard. You're joking. I can't be dead. I can't be. I clutch my head. My hands are cold. Stiff. Do not be afraid. Death comes for us all eventually. One of the few certainties we have in life. Though for you it came tragically early. Raoul is still up there. If I'm dead, then what's going to happen to him? What's going to happen to my friends, to my family? That I cannot tell you. I cannot see the future clear as crystal, nor do I decide it. Linger here, and you will meet them soon enough. This is where everyone goes when they die. Like some sort of heaven. I'm afraid this is not anything, Alex de Roig. It is neither heaven nor hell. This place merely is. Some kind of limbo. Of sorts, yes. A crypt far below the surface, at the heart of this world. 
far older than the city you call home, far older even than the creatures that live on your world. And it will remain here just the same until the last tree has shed its last leaf. At least, that is how it was supposed to be. Things are shifting in your world, becoming less stable. Even I find my existence threatened. What even are you? I am everything you know. Your kind built their city upon my carcass, and my blood runs to its every vein. I granted life. In turn, the creatures living in it sustain me. You eat people? You would think me so cruel. I mean, you are a scary voice in an empty void. And if what you're saying is true, I just... I can't even get the word died past my lips. Their hope is what sustains me. Their belief, their desire for a better future. It is a mutually beneficial relationship. So that's what you are talking about last time. Ah, you remember. This city needs hope if it is to survive. I need it. We both shall surely perish without. It might not seem it, but it is dwindling as we speak. I can only do so much to aid its recovery. So, I would ask for your help to change fate, to save your world. I know what you are about to say, that you're dead, that you cannot change anything. Part of you still thinks this is a hallucination, some vague, dying dream, taking over your failing mind as you bleed out on the pavement. But I assure you, it is not. Were it left up to fate? You would indeed remain a broken heap at the bottom of that skyscraper. Soul forever shut in this decaying tomb. That wouldn't do. You are still of use to me. I need an agent of sorts. A blunt instrument, if you will. Do you wish to live, Alex de Roy? More than anything. Then you shall, as many times as it takes. Do take care not to fall this time around. I lurch forward, surrounded by a circle of blinding lights to speed past me as though I'm in a long tunnel. Something pulls me along, faster and faster, and soon the lights become a blur. Then it stops, just as quickly as it began, leaving me in total darkness. Does count! That voice open my eyes despite having no memory of closing them. I'm back on the roof somehow. What the hell? Hint of the light, dog. Camo appears right in front of me, just as he did before I fell. Except this time his voice feels much more sinister. I have no time to think that tongue lashes at me again, hitting me just as it did before, sending me flying over the edge. Except this time acting on pure instinct, I take hold of it. 
Well, I ain't going to my tug. Thank God it's sticky enough for me to not lose my grip when he retracts it again. What did he say? Zero to sixty miles an hour in a hundredth of a second? Let's see what that force does to the body. As it speeds up, I brace myself and extend my foot. With incredible force, it collides with his face so hard it knocks him to the ground. His colour changes rapidly like a system bugging out. Let go of the slimy appendage, glad to be on solid ground again, watch it hang out of his open mouth once I clamber off him. <sighs> Dollhound! I rush on over the boss who slumped over near the stairwell. I'm so glad you're okay. Oh, I wouldn't say that quite yet. Oh, I'll definitely be feeling this in the morning. If you're here, does that mean we got him? We did, in the end. Good job, Spot. I'm proud of you. Uh, mind helping me up? I pull him up to his feet and together we walk on over the chameleon who's slowly coming to. I was worried he'd try to get away, but it seems even he's given up on that happening. Well, come and us, criminal. It's time to answer for everything you've done. The chameleon casts his eyes to the side. I hear a sob. I only wanted them to see. To see that I exist. To see what they did to me. I look off the edge of the building where I fell and take a deep breath. I should be angry. Furious. But instead I'm just exhausted. Wonder if it's even real. I understand. But this isn't the way to go about it. I'm sure you know that too, Camo. <laughs> you... You remembered. At last. How can I forget? You said it like 20 times. I extend a hand. He looks at it and slowly raises his own to take it. I didn't think it was possible. The harn is somehow even more crowded than it was this afternoon. I try to carve away through all the people. Raoul, Milo and Fenner following close behind me. It's difficult to find a seat to the four of us. Our fault for only getting here during happy hour, I guess. Eventually we might should find a corner. I wouldn't call it private, but we'll have to do. I hope Raoul can handle it. You doing okay, boss? Well, after today's events, this is nothing. I'm glad you could join us after all, Miss Fenner. I'm delighted to. With the going back in its rightful place, I can relax at long last. That like Camo's at least willing to give us the location of the storage unit to put the rest of the gown in. Where did it show up on Fenner's doorstep was essentially the Money Talks bathing suit. And there's someone here I wanted to see. Fenner, awesome, you made it. Ah, speak of the devil. The feeling is mutual, Lou. Why? You look so dashing. I could let William Mrs. the Bruin hog all the spotlight now, could I? What about you guys? Did anything go all right? I saw what happened. You... Saw? Are you kidding me? It's all over TV and the internet. People are already trying to figure out who you guys are. And you shouldn't have gotten up on that stage. I don't expect us getting traction this fast. Shouldn't be a problem, right? I mean, as long as nobody else figured out it's us. We immediately pulled aside by and come face to face with Willem. Yeah, oh, was that you up on that bloody stage? Uh, me? No, I mean, I uh, no. Uh, of course not. You can't fool me, Al. I've seen those spots more times than I can count. I can count pretty bloody high. What were you doing? What were you wearing? I sign rub my forehead. At least it's a noise you can't really pick out our conversation. Lou takes Fenner aside, the two of them head into the bar. Please tell me Dad doesn't know. You call that cleaning, huh? And the worst kept secret in town award goes to... Dad, listen, I can explain. Oh, I'm expecting an explanation, all right. We're always talking about a thief getting taken down at the convention centre. Suppose the one responsible is my own kid? Uh, Mr. Roy, I apologise. I don't hear another damn word out of your mouth, Ray. That isn't ever your name. Raoul lowers his head, seemingly unable to respond. Alex, 
Do you have any idea how dangerous little stunt of yours was? You'd have gone hurt out there. For God's sake, you could have died. I know. After tonight, after that fall, that strange dream, I know it better than anyone. But still... I don't even tell your mother. I take a deep breath. Then I'm happy. Dad looks like he's about to blow a gasket. What? You tell her that I'm happy. All my life I mean, feel like I've just been waiting for it to start, you know? It's always so jealous of you and Mom. You got to drive a fire truck every day. You guys were heroes. And now for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm doing something that actually matters too. That people will remember me for. Dad groans. Come on, Dad. I want to help people. Like you did. Well, I'm not sure I can let you do this. Why? Because you think I can't do it? Because I don't want to lose you. It don't be too hard to him, Balentiri. Mrs. De Bruyne is so tiny, didn't even realize she was standing next to us. Alex, sweetie, I never got to thank you for everything you did for me. She looks over at Raoul. And you as well, Mr. Dornhound. The two of you may have left quite the mess in my store. If you had not been there, I'm not sure I'd be standing here with you tonight. Oh, Maria. Looks like he wants to say more, but it seems the words are catching his throat. You've raised the wonderful young man, Barrett. One who is not afraid to risk his life to keep other people safe. She pokes him with her tiny fingers. Much like someone else, we know. Uh, that's different. Is it really so different? What did you always tell me back in the day? Whenever I asked you why you were such a dangerous job? Uh, because... He furrows his brows. If I can help save lives, if I can keep even one person out of danger, then it's all worth it. They exchange a look. The old bat is smiling from ear to ear. It would sound to me you've taught him well. Lou and Fanny walk back over, no doubt having watched us for a while. She's right, you know. Alex did kind of sort of save me at the gallery, too. There's a knowing look in Lou's eyes that says they're happily omitting the part where I dragged them there in the first place. There's the gown. You might have retrieved a priceless artifact, mostly in one piece. Not only that, but help prevent the syndicate from taking anything else. You guys. Milo has been quietly observing us all this time, steps in as well. He bows to Dad. And Mr. Zoroy, I'd be first to tell you I had doubts that Alex was up to task. When we first met, he lacked discipline. He lacked focus. He lacked conviction. He lacked any semblance of common sense. Gee, thanks. However, he has grown tremendously in the past week. He has demonstrated courage on more than a few occasions. He is quick-witted, resourceful, adaptable. And the best time psychic anyone could ask for. And he does look good in rubber. Still not rubber. I want so badly to chime in, but I can't keep my lips from trembling. Dad slams his fist on the table and exhales. He's my boy. I'm sure you understand. I wouldn't know what to do with myself if... Just give him save, you hear? If I must, I will give my life to protect your son. This is solemn promise I make to you. And so will I. Dad's expression softens as he turns to me. Be honest. There's a light in your eyes I haven't seen in a few years, son. Ah. He points at me and Raoul both. Fine, you have my blessing. If you want to be a bunch of glory hounds that bad, so be it. But don't you get dare go dine on me, there'll be hell to pay. Wait, that's it. Huh? Your team name, the glory hounds. Oh, I like the sound of that. You do that term usually has negative connotations, right? Oh, what a splendid idea, Lou. No mention of Crow, but it will do. Well, I guess I can't complain either if Milo and the boss are on board. Well, that's what I'll be called from now on, then. Thank you for the suggestion, Mr. Dufroy. You want to thank me? Thank me some royalties down the line, you hear? Well, that can certainly be arranged. I think he's joking, Raymond. Oh, oh. <laughs> we all laugh. Well, I can't say Metalli comes over your fighting blokes out there. Yes, certain. Far be it from me to stop you. Thanks, Willie. 
Now, with this new job of yours, I'm expecting you to get a head start on paying your tap. Okay. I love Al. How about a round from me? I'd like that. You're making a devil. We're doing shots tonight, baby. Dad, I'm not sure that's a good... Oh, shots, shots. I look at the crow. What? It is time to celebrate, yes? I'm glad the festive mood has returned. I remind me, Mrs. De Bruyne, what happened to your store after the robbery last week? Was well, there anything we can do to help, be it pay for damages or help with repairs? She weighs it off. Not to worry, dears. Not to worry. It's all been settled. Water under the bridge. How? Oh. Mr. Rahab stopped by earlier and repaired my window all by himself. Oh my gosh. He didn't try to pull anything, did he? Well, anything? I'm not sure what that phrase means. Did you call the cops on him? I saw no need. He seemed terribly so what happened and paid for the ruined merchandise. He was very cordial. What well, would you expect from someone I saw described as the hardened criminal? Seems like the Ahab I know. It really is more than just good looks than a criminal record. With everyone in good spirits, the party continues for a couple more hours. And Mrs. De Bruyne leaves to go tend to a store, though, where alcohol starts getting involved. Dad ends up so shit-faced, Lou and Willem drag him outside for a bit just to stop him from showing Raoul more of my baby pictures. Once Fanny goes to join them, Milo, Raoul and I are left alone in the bar. The rest of the crowd is dispersed by now, I can finally hear myself think. No matter how hard I try to focus on other things, though, my thoughts continue to circle back to what happened on the rooftop. Whatever the hell that voice was. I should tell them about it, right? No, I shouldn't. They think I'm crazy. Maybe they can at least help me make sense of it. So I sure as hell don't know what any of that was about. Did down in the cocktail, Mila personally directed villain to make for all of us, intentionally robbed myself of my better judgement, and decided to spill the beans. They look at me with a mixture of confusion and amazement as I start describing it all in detail. Raoul getting knocked out, the fall from the building, feeling my body hitting the ground. A strange voice as well as what it told me. As more and more words pass my lips, the feelings I've been impressing since we left the convention centre come to the forefront. My voice gets shaky with every sentence. Am I hearing this correctly? You died? I don't really know how to explain it. It felt like a fever dream. Well, I'm sure I remember you getting knocked off the roof in any case. Can you repeat what happened after? It was in this strange place. It felt like a void. A place that wasn't fully physical, deep underground. A voice called out to me. One I'm sure I heard before in, in some weird dreams. What kind of voice? I, I couldn't really place it. It didn't really sound like anyone I'd heard before. Like anything I'd heard before. I said all these things to me about the city needing hope, about me having a role to play in all of it. Looks like I get from Milo and Raoul are more than a little quizzical. Oh, believe me, I didn't fully get it either. Right after that's when it happened. It's back on the rooftop, it's if I'd gone back in time. Oh, Camo sent me flying, flashed before my eyes again. That deja vu was just enough to make me to act on it and. Change your fate? I guess, yeah. I find this hard to believe. It is not rational. You may have hit head harder than you thought. Well, I don't know, Milo. Maybe he's right. Yes, sir. Well, I don't know about precognitive visions. I want to believe what I experience was real. Whether it was a dream or not, I can't say. Countering such an attack without any kind of forewarning, though. He has been lucky before. I'm not crazy, Milo. I know what I saw. I don't think you're crazy, Discount. But I do worry. Combat can lead to traumatic injuries. Milo takes a long pause. His face contorted into a grimace. Milo? He snaps out of it and gives me a smile that feels just a tad forced. And you have taken many severe beatings in the past two days. I am merely concerned for your safety. I made promise to your father after all. I'm telling the truth. Some weird shit is going on. What's going to happen soon? I suggest focusing on healing for now. We can discuss the events later. You're not listening. If I may interject. Fena. Oh dear, my apologies for frightening you. I came back inside a little while ago. It was rather chilly out. And what about Lou? They seem rather preoccupied with your father. He's still in some 
very unique stories. I'd like to hear a little more about the experience you described. Well, if you promise not to tell Lou or my dad. Of course. What if you say stays between us? You believe this story, Miss Fenner? I'm a bit sceptical, to be quite honest. It does sound intriguing, Mimi. But you're not to call me that. I'm sort of a specialist when it comes to local folklore. Believe not, Hiffersburg has a rich history that stretches back hundreds upon hundreds of years. You find no shortage of stories, real or fantastical. So I take it this reminds you of something? You mentioned the place deep underground, yes? The story, more of a legend really, the states this city was built on top of a vast network of catacombs. How vast are we talking? Far larger than the city itself. That's freaking gigantic. All dead people. She tilts her head. A confused smile appears on her face, like a parent trying to find the best way to explain something to a toddler. As dead people are often found in catacombs, yes. It's just a local horror tale, though. There's been numerous excavations in the area. All many ancient relics were uncovered. They found no catacombs. I don't quite know where the story came from to begin with. Maybe they just didn't dig deep enough. Perhaps. I think it's thrilling, you know. The possibility there's something out there much larger than ourselves that we can never hope to understand. Well, sounds rather scary to me. The same. The fan seems to treat everything with the same excitement as when the syndicate locked her in the broom closet. The door opens. Lou and Willem come in. Dad hanging off their shoulders. We'll have to resume our conversation another time, Mr. Zoroy. And then, and then I said, I ain't monkeying around. <laughs> Real funny, my end. They shoot me a pleading look. He's that far gone, huh? I think that triple shot at the end was the one that did it. Watch it talk, watch it talk about Kilo. I'm still standing. Yeah, I'll take him home. Do you need me to drive you, discount? I'll be fine, once he doesn't vomit on me. I'll come with. Oh, I'll join you as well. Walk will do me some good after all that wine. What about you, Master Bra- I mean, Raymond? Well, I'll stay a little while longer, Milo, if you don't mind. You can go on ahead without me. Are you certain? Mm -hmm. I think I can get home on my own from here. Don't worry, I'll cover the tab. Oh, really? My surprise is mostly feigned. Now it's probably dropping the large, large bucket for him. The others don't. That's well, the least I can do. You all have a good night. We'll reconvene in the morning. We can call it the first official meeting of the Glory Hounds. Glory Hounds. He hiccups and pumps his fist. Okay, see you tomorrow. Have a safe trip. Well, nice place you have here, Willem. Thank you, Cadley. Probably with the cleaning, too. Well, it's real bad they do all the work while I sit and enjoy my drink. Well, I always get the heebie-jeebies when Milo does it. Yeah, the rust fella. You might as go back a long time. Well, about 23 years. We met while I was abroad. I see. You've got a bit of a worldly man, yeah. Of sorts. <laughs> really, though, he's been indispensable in my life. Helps keep me focused. I don't know where I'd be without him. Yeah, seems pleased to punch the both of you as well. I haven't seen a grin like that in a long while. Well, it's been great to get to know him. He's a bright fellow with a good heart. Where did these go? Oh, in that cupboard right over there. Thanks. Can I say, don't look half as nervous as you did when you walked in here this afternoon. Huh. I suppose it's easy now I've had some time to adjust. I can see why Alex likes it here. You really look after your own. Well, I figure it. When the world's as bloody uncertain as mean as it is, it's my way of fighting back, you know. A lot of times a person just on my doorstep with a place to go, or a place to call home. The parents get them out of the house, they lost their jobs, their friends are talking behind their backs. Just for being them. And they can't choose who they are. They can't choose who they love. They certainly don't seem to be treated like shite for that. I want to give folks like that a place to call home. A place where no one judges them, where they can be themselves. I don't understand where they're coming from. That don't mean I can't open my heart and home to them. Know what I mean? Oh, it's really sweet of you. I'm not good at solving problems with my fist like you. I solve them by listening, by talking, by showing kindness. 
we both got the same goal, yeah? To make this world just a little bit better to live in. That uh, we do. Don't be told. There's times I wish I could do more. So many folks need saving, and I... Well, sorry for going all heavy on you. That's the last of cleaning done. <laughs> Trying to bail your tab. I think everything you've done was more than makes up for it. I won't do. Yeah. This should cover everything, I reckon. Bloody hell, this is... It's several months worth of revenue, at least. I ain't seen so many 100 euro bills in my bloody life. Uh, and my phone number. If anything you need made, and you need paid, give me a call. I can't accept this. Like I said, I think everything you've done more than makes up for it. A certain. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You're wonderful. I want to help you make Shippersburg a better place for all of us. Us? Uh, yeah, um... Yeah, I mean to say you're gay, too. Hmm. I honestly don't know what I am in that regard. I never really thought about it before. I was always too busy. Is that strange? Strange? Of course it isn't. You're welcome here no matter what. I always know that. Now, come here. Oh, wasn't expecting a hug. You come here, you're going to get hugs. Plan on visiting more often, you're going to learn to deal with that. You know, well, I just might. Thank you, Willem. My name's Alex de Roy. I'm 28 years old, completely and utterly single. I'm just your average Dalmatian working a not-so-average job. I live in Schiffersburg, the capital of Batavia, where the weather's never just right and we always find something to complain about. But it's home, and it's my job to protect it. My boss is the masked hero known as the Dawn Hound, and I'm his sidekick. With our talents combined, we thought the many evildoers that threatened our fair city. Sound crazy? Hell, a little over a week ago I'd have told you the same. Why are you taking down a gang of pirate mobsters and invisible fashionista? Honest. You can call me Duskhound. And together we are... That was issue three. I hope you enjoyed that. It's a lot of fun to do. Some very fun voices in there. And yeah, Willem's voice. When he's trying to high one, I can't do, but I think he has a much bigger range than I do. But I hope you enjoyed it. I've literally been talking now for over two hours, pretty much solid. So I'm going to wrap this up very quickly. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not quite sure what the uh, video will be next weekend. It might be Lotom, a new VN, or the uh, checking out just came out a while ago. Uh, or if not, that'll be coming up soon. I really have to look at the schedule and I can't be bothered right now. <laughs> Looks like I've been talking for two hours solid. I really need tea. But before I go, as always, I want to say thank you to all my uh, donors on Kofi and Patreon. You are so appreciated. And my top patrons are Mario Cervantes, Rafu, Bieka, Harvest Mouse Productions, Nova Starburn, Omar, Smutu, Andy Peng. Kartek, Kovas Visser, Bastian, Brian Hall, Tiger Cub, Ida Corval, Dissonance, Grizz, Spiderling, Kopi, Sindri Dragowolf, Evan King, Exac, Aaron Fox, and Mohammed Al Zamel. Special thanks to all them, and also to the whole team working on Glory Hounds. They're all doing a great job on this one. It's always a pleasure to read. So until next week, thanks for watching. Bye for now.